Well, hello everyone. I know no one's on yet, but I wanted to do a brief update before the much anticipated FBI show that I'm going to be doing later. And I'm sorry, I got this like pink tint on the side here. It's still daytime here and I've got pink curtains on this. I'm in the basement. I am, I am literally a libertarian basement dweller. <laughs> And there's pink curtains and the lights coming through them and it casts a, a pink hue over everything that doesn't happen at night. But hello, everyone. The reason why I wanted to do this update before the FBI show is I know I will have watchers for the FBI show. And hello, Shannon. I do hope you, you come back in a couple hours. Actually, it's an hour and a half now that aren't going to be interested and just like, a, hey Dave, a basic update. And I didn't want to do a long intro to that FBI show where people had to scroll ahead 10 minutes to get to what they really wanted to hear. So I decided to do this. And I'm so glad Ryan, Ryan um, said, uh, happy Holy Saturday. I had intended on doing nothing related to the party today. I. 99% succeeded in that yesterday. It was Good Friday. We went to Good Friday services. They were awesome. I did break my fast a little bit and posted in Discord. But for me, I did really, really well. And I have to say, <laughs> some people may think this is bad. Some people may think it's good. When there was an emergency meeting and Obviously, by putting it in quotes, I don't think it was an emergency. We have an LNC meeting scheduled for next for next Sunday. To me, that was enough time. But an emergency meeting, no shade on people who had a different opinion, was scheduled for Good Friday. And I said, I'm not going. I had already promised my husband that Good Friday evening was going to be for Christ and for him. And I wasn't going. So that was the first LNC meeting that I've missed in seven years. And let me tell you, there was some freedom in that, that you do have to draw the line at some place. This party cannot consume your life. And in my opinion, there is no reason to have a meeting on Good Friday. Sorry and not sorry. I'll be doing the minutes from the recording, but that's why I was not there. It's funny on how some of the and we could use the word haters, we could use the word not fan, we're reporting on that meeting and just put down my vote as absent, even though it was very public why I was absent. It's funny how those sorts of things don't get reported. Just made it look like, ah, I was absent for no reason. No, I was absent because I was at Good Friday services. That's why I was absent. And oh my God, what an awesome service. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Good Friday service, and then we'll get into some LNC stuff. So it was at a church we didn't go to before. I'm not a regular attender. Um, I'm a Christian. I'm not a regular church attender. But I just had this conviction, probably starting about a week prior, that I needed to go to Good Friday service. So we went... And it was at this wonderful, small Lutheran church up the street from us. And they had something called a tenebrae service, which I had never heard of before. So they had this big cross with candles on it. And they read through the Gospels leading up um, to Good Friday, you know, back when it happened. And they had various people come up and do readings of spectators to the events, but from the opposite point of view. So people who were angry at Jesus, so not opinions of believers. And it was so powerful. Like when Zacchaeus, the tax collector, was up in the tree, you know, and he scrambled down and Jesus said, today, um, uh, you, you come down, Zacchaeus, because I must stay at your house tonight. And, and is he not a son of Abraham? And today salvation has come to the house of Zacchaeus. So they had someone come up and give a narrative that was like, how dare this Jesus forgive this tax collector? Doesn't he know all the bad things that he's done? I mean, it was so powerful hearing. And like, I was so convicted because I could relate to the people who were upset. And like when he forgave the woman 
who was found in adultery. Like it was super, super powerful. And a lot of you know, if you go back on my channel and search for Via de Cristo, you'll know that I have a connection to the Lutheran Church. It started out hostile and became very fond. And that Via de Cristo in the, in the Lutheran Church has, has, has been a big part of my life, even though I'm not a Lutheran. But walking into that sanctuary reminded me so much of Via de Cristo. The smells, the look, the ceremony, everything. And even one of the hymns we sang, Oh Sacred Head Now Wounded, it was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. I have zero regrets about missing a party drama, instead choosing to focus on my family in Christ on this one day of the year. So anyway, that's why I was absent. Now what else was I going to say for an update? Oh, we're coming into convention. And, you know, there's a lot for a secretary to do all year round. I know people who have done secretarial jobs um, under, in the party or outside the party in any kind of volunteer nonprofit understand that it's, it's a pretty thankless job and there's a lot of work to do. But when am I most important is in the months leading up to convention. Uh, convention, whether it's successful or not, often depends upon two things. One of them is very front-facing and usually gets all the glory, and that's having a good chair to chair the convention. But the unsung heroes, and uh, maybe I am going to flatter myself a little bit here. Okay, someone's got to do it. Um, of any convention is the background support. And in that case, it's going to be not just your convention secretary, but the support behind your convention secretary. I have assembled what I think is an awesome teller team of about 20 people, and that's what's going to keep the convention going. And the delegation chairs, they do not get enough credit. Them wrangling their delegations. So up until convention, I'm not going to have very many shows. I was elected to do a job, and now's game time. You know, it's game time. I can't be absent for that. No matter how stressful things get, no matter how much drama people are trying to foist, how much a particular regional representative without the consent of his region keeps calling for me to resign for something that I don't have control over. Not that I think anyone should resign, by the way. Um, right when uh, you're needed the most before convention. Like the most dumbass thing anyone could do is ask a convention secretary to resign prior to convention. Anyway, I'm not going anywhere, by the way. I will see you there at convention. And um, so what I'm going to be doing the next few months is trainings. So I will be training my tellers there's always still opening for convention volunteers. If you'd like to volunteer, you might not be on my teller team. We have needs in registration and all kinds of other areas. But if my hair is kind of crazy, I mean, it's always crazy, but it's crazier than normal. But if you might be interested in a last minute addition to being on my teller team, now's the time. I think the first training is next week. We're going to have three trainings up through, through April. We'll probably have at least another one in May. We are going to, um, I'm going to, I have two delegate chair trainings scheduled. Um, hopefully we're going to have a third one in May. I wish I brought down my calendar. Maybe I'll bring it down for the close of the show that everyone's anticipating that's starting now in exactly an hour and a half to show I have meetings every night. S one night on Tuesdays, the first and third Tuesday of every month, I have three meetings that those nights. A lot of times I have two meetings per night. So I am going to be very, very busy. And yes, this is live, I see in the chat. So I'm gonna be very, very busy. There'll be very few shows I'm going to do. Those of you who are my patrons, I know I'm not giving you a show a night. I hope you'll still stick with me because I need your support. And I will give you shows when I can and when there's something of importance. So what made me decide to do a show today um, rather than taking today off. I was going to take Friday, Saturday, and Sunday off. I am taking Sunday off from official party business. Um, I don't know if I'm going to church service. Even when I was a regular attender, I know this is going to sound terrible, but listen, I'm honest with you. I don't particularly enjoy Easter service. Why? Because there are people who are just 
and I'm one of them in a way. So I'm not ragging on anyone. And my family was this way. They're, they're Christmas and Easter Christians. And they don't really talk about their faith or think about their faith. And that's not me. I talk about it a lot. And I think about it a lot. Um, except for on Christmas and Easter. So I avoid Christmas and Easter services. But Good Friday is for the hardcore. Because Good Friday is not a... It's not a good time. It's a very somber, reflective time. So that's why I really felt convicted to go to Good Friday services. I've always felt Good Friday services more enriching. So anyway, I'm not sure. We might go back to that Lutheran church, though, for, for Easter services. But I don't know. In any, either event, I'm not doing party drama on Easter. Christ is king, by the way, and Christ is risen. Because since apparently Christians aren't allowed to say that, any longer. Um, and no, Good Friday is not Catholic. Good Friday is universal throughout Christendom. Uh, so it's not just uh, it's not just Catholic. I went to Calvary Chapel when I was in my more fundamentalist days, and that's as non-denominational as they come. And Good Friday was a big, big deal there. I don't I can't think of any Christian denomination um, in which Good Friday is not a big deal. But Easter tends to be community outreach and not very heavy. And I'm telling you, when I go to church, I want to be convicted. Like, I want to hear the heavy stuff. Like, I want to hear where I'm failing. I don't want a feel good, everything's all sweetness and light and puppies uh, service. Um, I want to hear, yeah, this happened to Christ because of you guys fucked up. I mean, I'm sorry. Some people don't like that. I'm a Christian. I've never hid that. That's what I'm. That that that's why I go to church. I I don't go to church to hear Joel Olstein stuff. You know, I go to church to be convicted to be a better person. That's why I go to church, not to be told I'm a good person already. That that's that's not that's not why I why I go. Oh, Dave, I didn't know Holy Friday was in May for the Orthodox. So let me tell you something interesting you might not know about me. I was not raised Orthodox. But my heritage is Russian Orthodox. My mother had to convert to Catholicism in order to marry my dad. This was during that time when the Catholic Church would not marry you unless you were both Catholic. My, my dad, he isn't my biological father, but the, the person my mom married who raised me, uh, he um, is as Italian as Italian can be, so very, very Catholic. And my mom converted to Catholicism in order to marry him, but she was raised Russian Orthodox. And my grandparents are Russian Orthodox. So I do have a very soft spot in my heart for the Orthodox faith. One thing that I super enjoy about the Orthodox faith that I did not appreciate when I was in my more fundamentalist days is the uh, the universalist hopefulism that is in orthodoxy um, and also the pietistic is that the right word? P pietistic um, almost uh, what do you call it uh, I'm not trying to think of the, the right word but where things aren't quite so literal um, but I am still not orthodox I am um, definitely a Protestant, and if I had to categorize where my beliefs line up most now, it would be with the Quakers. And the only reason I'm not a Quaker is because I can't get rid of the pink hair and the flashiness, and Quakers believe in plainness. And one thing I'm not is not extra, and I can't get rid of that not extra. But in other ways, other than the not extra part, nearly every single one of my beliefs, I'm a pacifist, um, I'm a, whatever. Anyway, I align most with the Anabaptist uh, Quaker, Quaker tradition. So what else did I want to talk about? Okay, I know there's a lot of party drama going on. No, JJ, there's an FBI show at six. This is an informal update show. The FBI show is at six. Um, uh, which is Four Mountain, which is in an hour and a half. I wanted to do all of this personal stuff that I do at the beginning of each show now so that we could get right into the FBI stuff next show. So this is just my personal wrapping with y'all. We're going to do the FBI show still um, in an hour and a half. I'm not a teetotaler, so that that's another thing. But I also... 
could drink, not drink. Like, I don't care one way or another, but I'm definitely not a teetotaler. Um, in fact, I just got back from lunch and had two spicy margaritas with Wayne at the Great Divide. It was wonderful. So, I understand there's a lot of drama <laughs> going on, and I have felt just a complete freedom uh, from it. It's been very, very stressful, I'm not going to lie. Wayne will tell you what a personal toll's been taken, but I haven't brought it public, and I'm not going to. I find it so ironic that the people who were upset with me last term for blah, for dumping everything publicly are now mad at me for not dumping everything publicly, which goes to show it's not a principled position. It's not. They're just in it for how they can exploit you. And I'm not your whore. You are not going to exploit me. Now, one reason why I wanted to... Um, do the FBI show today and why I decided to do stuff today rather than waiting till Monday is, of course, some of the usual suspects without hearing all of the information wanted, uh, uh, are trying to, and we're going to get into this more in the show, I'm giving you a bit of a teaser, are like claiming that the announcement from Angela and the email from the National Party is fake and they've proved it's fake. Well, I'm going to get a little biblical upon you. God hates a lying tongue, and you are lying because it is absolutely genuine. And I have receipts, and I am looking forward to your public apologies. And I say that with my tongue planted firmly in my cheek because I know these type of people, they will not apologize. Now, you may disagree with the conclusions that I am going to draw or one of many possible conclusions I'm going to draw from what I'm going to reveal at 4 o'clock. But to claim that the contact in that letter is fake, you're about to eat some crow. And I hope the crow is bitter. Maybe I didn't learn enough from Good Friday service because I'm not feeling very forgiving about people who slander other people without evidence. So some people have said, well, why didn't you come forward with all of this on Thursday? The only reason people are saying it's a fake and a lie is because we haven't gotten all of the information yet. Well, I am the primary witness, myself and the party's attorney. It happened on Thursday. I did not have permission to go public. Unlike some people who just go and rattle off everything, you know, that could be sensitive, I immediately contacted the party chair. Until I got clearance from the party chair that I could go public with this, I was not going to breach my fiduciary duty and go public with it because there could be something she knew that I didn't know. There could be all kinds of things in which it would make it inappropriate and that we needed to stay silent. So late Thursday, I, we got more information and the party chair said she was going to be releasing a public statement. And would I please not say anything publicly until after the party issued an official statement? And I said, sure. The party issued an official statement on Good Friday. I was not going to do a show on Good Friday. So why did we wait? It shouldn't take that much bear of a big brain to figure out that a Christian might not be so eager to be streaming on Holy Weekend. But okay, because everyone's going around saying this is a lie, what a better way to spend Holy Week than to combat somebody saying you're a liar. Because you want to know who lies? Satan, the father of lies. So if I can spend Holy Week confronting the, not calling anyone a literal demon, but lying is something that God hates. And if I can spend time confronting that, then I am spending this Saturday honoring God. But I'm not doing nothing tomorrow. But that's why I waited. All right. There are some questions. We'll, we'll, we'll do a little bit of question and answer. Why not? And then I'm going to get further ready for the show. Um, Andrew Rains asks, uh, let's put this here. Is the FBI going to be here? Um, maybe. We'll talk about that, won't we? <laughs> um, do I? They'll probably watch it. 
Hey, feds! Not this one. They'll probably watch the other one. I doubt they're going to watch this one. Um, but I think because I put them in the title of the other one that some 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 poor agent <laughs> is going to get assigned to watch that show. Um, Maximum Libertarian says, how can the LP make it so that we can get our candidate nominated sooner? You're not going to like what I'm going to have to say. I am totally opposed to nominating our candidate sooner. However, let me answer your question because you didn't ask me my opinion. You asked me how, it, I want to put it back on the screen, how it can happen. Um, there's nothing in our bylaws that prohibit it. The way to make it happen is to lobby the next, not the next LNC, the LNC after that, that sets the date for the convention to make it earlier. But if you want to know why I am opposed to it, please do a search and maybe I can stick the link in chat or someone else can. Um, I did a show with former chair Steve Dosbeck in which we talked about why it's not a great idea to nominate our candidate earlier, though he is much less opposed to it than I was. I found the link. I'm going to stick this in chat so you can see why I have the opinion I do. Maybe I'll change your mind. Maybe I won't, but at least you'll understand why I have that opinion. Let me see if there are more questions in chat. Here's Mike. Yeah, I'm definitely unorthodox. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What? Ah! Uh, my my stream deck has changed. I updated it, dated it, and I don't have my glasses. Where's that's what she said? You gotta take what you're given. That's how we live it. Don't be mad at the system. It's simply how we've existed. I hear a lot. Okay, of I'm back. Hold on. Y you can tell my thing got all messed up. What's this? None of this is working. I'm gonna have to re-update my stream deck. Uh, Mike knows about stream deck, but it. it I did a software update and it screwed it all up. Okay, let me see if there are any other questions. I don't think there were. I think I think I answered all those. So I'll stick around a few more minutes to see if there are any other. Can you talk about the letter the party received from the Veritas law firm? No, I cannot. Um, that is ongoing um, stuff and I'm not going to talk about that. So unfortunately, well, I'm not going to even say unfortunately. Fortunately, I can't. Um, and why I say fortunately, because one thing I can say, actually, I can talk about it a tiny bit. I'm not going to talk to you about any of the, the legal merits, dismerits. All I can say is when you have libertarians trying to rig a convention by threatening legal action in order to prejudice people against people who might be running, uh, that's a corrupt Democrat move. I don't like Trump, but all of those things that all those dumbass lawsuits they're filing against him just to try to keep him from getting elected. Yeah, that is scummy. That is super scummy. We have a national convention coming in two months. There is no good faith reason at all to pull that stunt, whether or not you agree with what's in that letter or not. Whether or not you agree with it or not, it is a naked political ploy. And to use the law as a naked political um, uh, ploy is just disgusting. Even if you think it has merits. Even if you think it has merits. So that is all I'm going to say upon that. I'm not going to say anything on the legality, the weaknesses, the strengths, anything to do with that because that is confidential legal strategy. I could just tell you that person as a person, I think it's, well, we all know who's organizing it. It's Nick Sarwark, who, speaking of feds. Anyway. <laughs> oh, Shannon, that was you? <laughs> Oh, that's hilarious. So Shannon says, sorry, Stone Shannon had the horrible thought you were a fed. <laughs> Let me tell you a funny story. Um, when Lisa sent that to me, um, I thought it was hilarious. I really thought it was hilarious. And let me tell you why. When I first came on the scene in the party, so I've been in the party since 2014, but I got elected to the LNC in 2016, which was a year and a half after I first stepped 
darkened the door of an LP meeting. And I really have no political history before that. I mean, I would vote once in a while. I was kind of like a Christian and Easter voter kind of thing. I would show up for the for for the presidential elections, maybe, and if I could get some time off from work. Like I was totally apolitical, and then all of a sudden, I burst on the scene, and I got elected in a oh that is that is interesting reno resetter um i'm gonna put this on the screen i don't know i'm not attesting to the truth of it um but this is a comment i think people might want to see um that the lawyer is going after steve bannon in another manner dc is a political town dc is definitely a political town so I would hope people on both sides of the aisle realize that things should get settled at national convention and like threatening lawsuits were literally six weeks before convention. Like just think about how batshit that is. Really, just think about how batshit that is. So back to me being a fad allegedly or funny or Stone, Stone Shannon. Now we're going to have Stone Shannon's going to be a regular character on my show. Um, so back when I first got elected to the LNC, there were people commenting, where the heck did this chick come from? Like, how did she go from zero to LNC in 18 months? They didn't realize I had weaponized autism. You don't need to be a fed when you have weaponized autism. When you have weaponized autism and the LP is your specialized, is your special interest, you can get far pretty fast because, listen, I, I I should one day read my diagnosis report on air because even the doctor without me saying it in, in my evaluation report was like, she seems overly interested in the Libertarian Party. I'm like, that's putting it mildly because she's like, oh, so 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 when did you become um interested in in the libertarian party and i gave her the exact date in september 2014 and i said it's the date that ann coulter wrote that anyone who votes for a libertarian for senate should be drowned yeah she thought that was a bit odd that i knew the exact date um and funny on the evaluation report the first sentence is patient karen ann harlos presents much younger than her chronological year, years and talked about my hair and my sparkly nail polish and what I was wearing and it was just pretty funny. I did read it. Okay, see, I don't even remember. I know I read part of it. But anyway, I, I just thought that was uh, pretty hilarious. So I'm not a fed. I'm just autistic. <laughs> I need a shirt that says that. I swear. I'm not a fed. I'm just autistic. <laughs> <laughs> so but a lot of people were saying that and then after they saw the way i acted and voted and some of the things i said though though i suppose a fed could do that i mean but anyway i there, there's plenty of people who who have done enough illegal things within person that shouldn't be illegal by the way victimless crimes that know that feds don't actually do that so i'm not a fed <laughs> But I thought that was hilarious um, when that was sent to me. And she didn't say who said it, by the way, Shannon. You outed yourself because Lisa, Lisa did not tell me who said it. <laughs> she would not tell me. <laughs> anyway, okay, let's see if there are any other questions. Let's see. Uh, 23 Ski 2. Is the LP in the room here with us now? The LP is always here in the room with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's see if there is anything else i don't think so let's give it one more moment i do have some diet mountain dew mm. it's been sitting here since this morning when i did that thumbnail can you just picture me so y'all saw the thumbnail for the show later tonight here's me in front of my camera doing the thumbnail you know <laughs> <laughs> I don't normally do this kind of like clickbaity thumbnails, but I figured I would do it for tonight just to be fun. Okay, an hour and 10 minutes. I will see you guys. I, I'm just waiting to see if there's anything else I wanted to update. And I don't think so. Mostly it was to tell you guys there's not going to be many shows for six weeks. And I apologize. And patrons, please don't drop me. Hey, and if you want to become a patron, 
uh, let me stick this here. I would really, really appreciate it. Does it there it is. Support me at Patreon. Um, Pink Flame of Liberty. What was a, a, line, a Lena Del Rey song? Um, my favorite Lena Del Rey song. If, if anyone in chat, I don't even know how many people know who that is. She's somewhat obscure, isn't she? Or maybe she isn't. My favorite, what's your favorite Lena Del Rey song, 23C2? I would love to, uh, I'm going to give you a moment to um, put it in there. Otherwise, I'm going to say what mine is. Because I'm just curious if we have the same favorite song. And maybe I should play, no, then I'll definitely get copyright struck. I'm already going to have the FBI watching me. Um... Oh, okay, gotcha. My favorite Lana Del Rey song is Grandma. I just freaking love that song. And uh, she does an awesome job at it. Okay, Grandma, leave the lights on for me. All right, we will, we will. That's the royal we. Me and the FBI. Me and the FBI will see you now in T minus one hour and 10 minutes. And Michael Lopez, who allegedly did a whole debunking of that FBI letter on Boomer Book. Cue up the apology, Michael. Cue up the apology. See you then.